Powder Shapeshifters, K Pike here, and today I'm going to show you how to transform into Nebula. Jumping right in here to Nebula, let's get hooked on the spirling of Fuchsia. As I do in so many of my videos and live streams on Twitch, I'm trying to explain how to do the art along the way. I have little light sources in and I'm showing that I want to have like this kind of blasting in pink underglow light and showing where the catches are. That's the little arrows are trying to represent. As well, I'm showing this golden glow, this hotter heat coming down in and from up top. I do this anchor point lighting technique in most of my paints, and it really helps you get through the entire traditional artwork within a control Z. I've already laid down kind of a UV day glow fuchsia in a hybrid paint. If I want a really, really bright color, I'll go in with some sort of day glow as a base. Always be careful when you're layering paint. However, if you get layers too thick, it can chunk. And remember, your skin is wibbly wobbly. The thicker things are, the more likely they are to crack and flake off. It takes some finesse, but anyone can do it. And I'm doing a quick color block, getting all the color fills, covering up any of the human flesh tone. It's very important to cover up that golden glow when you're painting yourself as a purple alien. Also the metal arm, I'm going in with a grayish blue. I never use a pure white or pure gray for metal. Metal will always reflect all the light around it. Because I'm surrounding this with pink swirling lights, but still trying to show off the cool steel of everything. It's gonna also be reflecting off of her skin and other upgrades and her outfits. I'm gonna be tying in all the colors all the way throughout. You can see that I'm focusing on the highlight pass in the metal, so kind of giving a rough outline edge to any of the metal sections. I'm using a hybrid paint. Again, this is for the layering effect. You have to be very, very careful when you are using this type of paint. However, it will very gladly flake off and go on its own adventures. So I don't use it as big sweeping passes, but little bits of edging and a way to kind of layer and base coat, get your bright edges in. Because it is a metal, you often see the punched or folded or edged pieces whenever you are doing a armored shape. It's important to make sure that you're referencing the material itself. Ah, belts. I like lots of belts. Belts are a great way to define the edges of your piece. I'm very careful with perspective lines whenever I'm doing belts. You always have to think about where the camera is and you can use belt lines to kind of force the perspective of where the camera view should be from. This will help you elongate a torso or shorten one or add different lighting effects later. It's really fun watching how these pieces fill out. Kind of like a circular movement around the canvas. Where do we fill out the edges to? You gotta think about that. You're scaling everything to the canvas that you're given whenever you're doing body art. Glitch on through. Here and you can see that I put in the eye. Because I am a live stream performer, I always try to do anything that is good to do on camera, on camera. Tricky things like around faces, around eyeballs, it takes my eyes off of chat. Going in quite generously with a hybrid paint here, trying to get my brightest bright lights. So things like the fingers, so things like the exterior edge of the arm. I'm following that lighting map that we kind of made earlier 100%. I'm thinking, okay, where is light gonna be bouncing off of this? Then going in with a glycerin based shadow pass, starting with some lovely indigos here. I always feel so thematic whenever I'm painting myself purple. Matches my design aesthetic. So you can see that I'm starting with the mid-tone purple abruptly edged against the white highlight. With my brush full of indigo, I am going and trying to block out the rest as I can, like filling out where the edge of her outfit is. Having the congruent color all the way through, the color scheme, makes it look a lot more like the comic art or say a more traditional form of art. While you're body painting, you get very tired, colors get mixed together. You're a lot more likely to get blurry colors or strange colors. So what you wanna do is make yourself look like you're a piece of digital art, which is like one fill tool, one color fill that you use click, 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 all the way around the canvas. It does take discipline. You have to clean your brush, you have to clean your paint, but just working with one color all the way and throughout can really set it as kind of this semi-traditional, semi-digital look. The double take. I do try very hard to keep my paints from mixing and that includes on myself. So when I am going over a color with another, with the indigo on the pink there or on the white, it's a very light touch. I don't try to blend on canvas. Then going in with the heavy inks. Here's where we get dramatic. So I have the mid-tone purple, and I know I want it to be dark and moody. So instead of starting with an intermediary lighter purple in between the indigo and the white, what I'm doing is right away going in with the cake dark. And then of course, the beautiful teal. Can't get over the color scheme of this character. She's absolutely lovely. If you too think that this is a good character design and a good artistic choice, like the art itself, you can collect it in its NFT form or snag some cool wallpapers or bonus features by being one of my patrons on Patreon. As showmanship dictates, the face is last. 
She lost an eyebrow somewhere along there. Pay no attention. Notice as this art educator struggles not to paint around her mouth and remain keeping eye contact with the chat. The great thing about the glycerin paints is they are more flexible than the airbrush paints which we were talking about before, the airbrush or hybrid. You can cake them on quite well. I did not need to put a blend line or anything in between for my hairline there. It goes on simple and smooth and lovely. It's also very friendly around the mouth because it will move when you are moving and when you are talking. You can see what I'm trying to line up the forehead lines. The face line is symmetrical on either side, but the robotic eye implant comes a little bit over that line. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that I still have the balance, the symmetry in the purple stripe of her face. And you notice that I make several small strokes to get that line straight. It's really, really worth it to get it straight. The more lines, the more you can give yourself guides. Think of it as your blue sketch lines when you're drawing. Because this is water activated paint, it is also water removed paint. So you can either buff out your edges, put another color on top of it, or remove it some if you get your line too warbly or too extreme. You just want to make sure that it averages out to be that straight that you need. The general rule of thumb is that seams are always symmetrical, but lighting never is. I'm then going in with a shadow pass on her face, reflecting the light that I have in the room. But a fill light of magenta in my imagination in behind me, a little bit of a lower three-quarter spotlight reflecting upward, and that tiny bit of golden glow coming in off of set probably on the upper stage right or left side. I'm going to darken in the middle of the face and make it look like there's the colored light and the spotlight coming in from the outside. So starting in the middle of the face, I'll go in with my darker and mid-tones first. Still staying within the color range in case I need to change it later. And because we are dealing with different depths, the mechanical piece that's on top of her skin, let's add some indigo shadow. It's really, really differentiating the bright white of the metal. A little bit different from comic art, but it's just always felt right to me is to use colors for the contrast. And the I can also stay within the same color range, so the purple, to define that edge line first. Again, many, many, many lines work together. Teamwork makes the dream work. Because I'm still in that color purple space, then I can push back the lilac a little bit more. Mid-tone lighting more where I want it. And I will lighten it in sections if I have other color lighting coming in too. This is also a great way to hone up the edge lines, remove brush strokes, and make it look a lot more like a comic with smooth, crisp fill lines other than a painting. I then go over for a firm highlight pass with a cream stick. Being a cream base, it does not mix with the glycerin base, and you can stack the paint colors on top of one another. I use this for highlights as well as a way to remove my lips. I am trying to steal another character's face. We're going partly cinematic universe here with Nebula. It's also a way to make you look bigger. If you shrink your face, your the silhouette of your face looks bigger. Your neck looks bigger, your shoulders look bigger. So even though it's a shrunken head technique, it's a really good thing to do. Then the magenta color pass. Here's where it gets good. Tying in that lighting of your imagination, that fill light in the back, and how it's going to interact with this character. This also acts as a wash technique if you're washing with lighting that's surrounding the scene. So to make her look like an all of her is in the same set, let's add that magnificent magenta, the fantastic fuchsia, all the way around. I'm still paying attention to point source lighting here and where the pink light is going to be bouncing off. Then we can start going in with the cooler tones. So her flesh tones are actually this blue. I'm also being generous with the warmer tones. So the inside of the ears and on the cheeks, there'll be that blush as if this is like, you can see the warm blood underneath this. With her to express that sweetness and that softness underneath all of this hard edge. I'm then chasing the pink light with a little bit of a lighter white and a little bit of a brighter blue and carefully blending them in. You don't want your colors to get muddy, so you have to be very, very careful with that. Notice how how I am using a cool wash for her flesh tones, but her outfit is this neon vibrant hotter pink. Even though it's still a cool pink, it's not as cool as her tone. She's a cool character. Exact same as any of you that are colorists out there. You design the color on the character. Being sure to chase all of the edges that I have very firmly with the blue. This will also add for great color contrast to make it more vibrant and pop more. I choose pop art characters. Let's pop! With a narrow brush, I'm carefully lining, adding that almost ink shadow line. Because we all grow to love the softness of Nebula, I'm trying to keep her soft. Less contrast through the face. What you see in this painting is her character, and that's what I'm trying to express here by keeping the face lines just in color themselves, not heavy inks. She is complex, has incredible character growth, 
In Guardians of the Galaxy, she has some of the most human traits out of any of the characters. The clashing, the high contrast that's more in the metal for her, that's her circumstance. The way I designed this, it's to show that her heart, her edge, is something implanted, put on top of her, but really she's a character with beautiful soul, a soft, a sweet, a sister, kill machine when she's on the outside. It's a very personal piece in a lot of ways for that. It all goes into the design and artistic interpretation of these paints. I'm then using a alcohol base to define her features a little bit better. I will of course put links down below. And finishing the inking, this is always fascinating when the colors start popping. What you do is you just lace inks and brights wherever cameras are going to catch you. I'm not doing much to change the shape of her face, however. Thankfully, her jawline is very similar to mine. And there's some intense focus here as I am going over the face lines. The final detail before the big reveal. Drum roll, please. I really had a great time showing you my painting. And for more promises promises, I have links down below of some of the products that I use. Big shout out to all of the guardians of this galaxy of color on Patreon. Join us for really cool bonus features so we can keep producing more art streams and tutorial videos. If you are hooked on the feeling of this painting sorcery, check out some of my NFT works links down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to comment on which painting you'd like me to put up next. Feel free to ask questions. If I inspire your work at all, please tag me on any platform. I'm gonna space out for now. See you soon.